namaste. So our uh, viewer, our friend, this, I guess he's just some kind of student, <laughs> Ryan, he made a comment that, that if somebody has to come to the feet of the guru, that means 99.9% .9 of everybody has no chance at liberation. Because, you know, they're not going to do it, right? <laughs> they're not going to do it. But it's their choice not to do it. And so, actually, everybody has the chance at liberation. The scriptures aren't secret. We're not hoarding them in some cave someplace up in the Himalayas. Huh? We're shouting from the rooftops. We're trying to get everybody to read them and study them and do what they advise. But very few people are doing it. Yes, you do have to approach a, a bona fide spiritual master and take initiation and do all these things. Yeah, that's required because it's given in the scriptures. Huh? It's not because I or anybody else thinks it's a good idea, but to be linked with the source of Vedic knowledge through the process of initiation is called Guru Parampara. It means the chain of initiation going back, back, back to the original source. That is God or goddess. So everybody, I, I believe, or actually I've seen by my experience, everybody gets a chance to approach a real, a bona fide spiritual master. I think everybody in their lives gets a chance. Let me give the example of my Adi Guru. He came to the U.S. by freighter across the North Atlantic in the winter, which if you don't know about sailing and stuff like that, is probably the worst crossing, you know, the worst ocean crossing you can make. North Atlantic in the winter. At the age of 72 years old, he had three heart attacks on board the ship. And he landed in New York with no friends, no money, no place to stay, nothing, only a trunk of books. And somehow or other, uh, we won't get into that, <laughs> he created this like international movement. He personally had like 10,000 disciples or something like that. He opened 108 temples of Radha Krishna all over the world within 12 years. That's an amazing mission. And he was all over the newspapers and TV magazines, you know. In those days, people got their news from newspapers and magazines. Huh? Yeah, they're, they're, newspapers are really good to roll up and chase away the dinosaurs, you know. <laughs> but anyway, back in the days, everybody heard of my Adi Guru. Everybody. He was on the front cover of all the big papers and magazines and on all the major news networks, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. He was as famous as the Beatles, and the Beatles were really famous. <laughs> so, did everybody get a chance? Yes. Huh? He had his disciples distribute millions of books, tens of millions of books. I'm not even sure, but it's a lot. Maybe, you know, close to 100 million books of Vedic spiritual wisdom. Did anybody read them? Hardly. Did anybody follow them? Practically none. Even among his own disciples. They got deviated into politics and making money 
and drugs and, you know, God knows what else. And very, very few of them actually did the sadhana that results in self-realization. Very few, just a handful maybe, out of 10,000. I mean, Krishna says right in Bhagavad Gita, out of, of 10,000 men, maybe one knows me in truth. And of those who know me in truth, thousands and thousands of those who know me in truth, maybe one actually attain, uh, attains enlightenment. So everybody has the chance, but they don't take it. Huh? This, this isn't a private YouTube channel. Anybody can watch. Huh? Anybody can download. We have copies of the scriptures on a lot of our videos. You can download and read them. Huh? There's no charge. It's free. But how many do it? See? That's why 99.9% .9 of the people don't get the benefit. Not because they don't have the chance, not because they lack opportunity, but because when they get the opportunity, they don't recognize it, number one, and number two, they don't value it. So number three, they don't act on it. <laughs> yeah, they're fools. They're fools because they're throwing away probably the only chance they'll have in this lifetime to actually end all their problems. To, to let go of all their sufferings. Huh? To get out of this world of birth and death, samsara. What can we do? Everybody has free will. Everybody can make choices. Huh? Anybody who's an adult, they can choose to either accept or reject any knowledge or any practices or any teacher or, you know, it's up to them. We can't force them. Even if we could force them, it wouldn't be right. Because a person should approach spiritual knowledge by their own free will. They should do it because it's beautiful and they love it. Not because somebody told them to or orders them to or forces them to. Huh? Convincing is allowed. <laughs> That's why we present many arguments in these videos that why you should take up this knowledge, why you should do these practices and sadhana and so on. Because it's good for you, huh? Take your vitamins, it's good for you. <laughs> because it is like medicine. It's the medicine that cures the disease of repeated birth and death. So, as I was just saying in, in the the other video on Lakshmi Tantra, which you should also watch, huh? that people don't realize how much trouble they're in. They don't realize how serious the situation is in this material world. That they're going to have to take body after body after body and suffer each time the same way or worse than they're suffering now. But people want to pretend they're not suffering. Oh, yeah, everything's okay. It's all right. You know, it's fine. You know, the, the number, number two engine just blew up, but that's all right. We have another one, you know. <laughs> so they don't take the action the, that the emergency, the, the uh, intensity of the situation demands. See, I mean, I'll give you an example from my own life. I have an opportunity almost every day to start a relationship. Huh? I won't get into the details of how or why, but I do. Trust me. Multiple opportunities sometimes, every day. 
But you know what? I blow them off. And you know why? Because I want to dedicate my entire life energy, intelligence, attention, and action to getting free from this world. So I put them off. I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm too busy, or, you know, my work, or something or other. You know, I don't really work that hard. <laughs> well, sometimes I do, but only when I'm into it. Only when I feel like it. So I have plenty of time to take care of myself. I actually have plenty of time if I wanted to have a relationship. But guess what? I don't want anybody on my mind except the goddess at the time of my death. Because we've quoted that verse so many times. Whatever state of being one remembers at the time of death, that he shall attain without fail in the next life. So I don't want to remember some random relationship partner. Huh? I want to re remember the goddess. But I want to remember her by name, by form, with love in my heart, with gratitude. Huh? I don't want to be clinging to this life and thinking, oh, I don't want to leave, you know, because I have this relationship. I don't want to be entangled. I want to be free. So if that means that I can't belong to any kind of groups or I can't have, you know, a lover or I can't have a lot of friends, that's okay. Huh? Because all that is perishable anyway. At the time of the end of this body, all that is going away. Whatever money I have, whatever possessions I have, whatever relationships I have, whatever feelings I have about stuff, it's all going away. So why should I be attached to it? See, this is intelligence. This is applying the, uh, the instructions of the scriptures in practical life. So, you know, like way back in the days when we did our series on Vedanta Sutra, we talked about the uh, qualifications for one who's going to study Vedanta. And they're like Sama, Dhamma, uh, Titikshiva, Karunika, uh, which means uh, equanimity, neither for or against anything, detachment, uh, not clinging to anything, compassion, and wisdom. See, these are the minimum qualifications for someone to actually study the Vedanta Sutra. And we see, these days, nobody can, re can read it even. Huh? Nobody even wants to. I mean, when I first got a hold of Vedanta Sutra, I was like, you know. <laughs> it was a big, thick book like this. I read every word. And anything I didn't understand, I would look up the terminology. I would make diagrams and take notes and do all this stuff. Who is doing that? And why not? Because they don't take seriously enough the danger of living in this world. And so they miss the opportunity. And nobody... They can't blame anybody but themselves because we're doing our best to make the opportunity as widely available as possible. And my gurus did that too. And, and they got shouted down by the chorus of fools in Kali Yuga, materialistic society, overwhelmed by phony disciples and phony God brothers and, and phony religious organizations. You see? So if I just stay here quietly by myself and make my little videos, 
It's not because I don't want to come and help you. I wish I could. But because that's not the way. The way is to approach a spiritual master, serve and take initiation and instruction from him. That is the ancient way, the Dharma, the path that leads to enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.